We bring you greetings in the most holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord for this time, this moment. Praise God to glorify our King, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. We only know one to glorify. We only know one name to call upon. And that name is above every name. Praise God. Every name. There's no name above the name of Jesus. Praise God. Some of you that go into the Old Testament and find all the, the names that relate to covenants that's past and like to use those names in, in, in describing God. But uh, there's only one name to describe him. That name is Jesus. Amen. And in, in Hebrew, the name is Yeshua. And in essence, the name means salvation. So when Jesus said, I came in my Father's name, God's name is salvation, meaning everything you need, everything you will ever need in this life or the life to come is found in him. Praise God. Isaiah uh, uh, referred to the prophecy of the coming of, of the Lord in the 12th chapter when he said, in that day you shall say, praise the Lord, which is in translation, hallelujah. Let's put it to you this way. In that day, you should say hallelujah. Because Yahweh has become our Yeshua. Or Jehovah has become our Jesus. And when that day takes place, you're going to say hallelujah. Praise, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Because then in the same uh, scripture, it says, for his anger has passed. See, forgiveness has come. That means God's, God was one time angry with you, but now he has forgiven you, so his anger has passed. And the day comes when you know God is your Savior, then Yahweh then becomes your Yeshua. Jehovah then becomes your Jesus, praise God, because you came to know him as Savior. Praise God. And the word of God revealed to us in the book of Matthew that when we look at Yeshua, you're looking at Yahweh, or when you look at Je Jehovah, you're looking at Jesus, when they say he shall be God with us. He shall be Yahweh with us. He shall be Jehovah with us. The Hebrew word for um, God is Yahweh, and in, in the translation called says Jehovah. Praise God. So this is revelation, and it's not everybody don't get it, and it's okay. But understand is Christ is more than one dimension. You see him as son of God, that's one dimension. You see him as son of man, that's another dimension. Praise God. You see him as the mighty God, that's another dimension. The same as you see him as son, the scripture declare him in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, he shall be called the everlasting father that's another dimension praise god of christ but some people only know christ in one dimension and they get confused but christ is more than one dimension praise god and as time goes on all believers will see who christ is now christ would have to be the son, son of God to us because the only way we could attain salvation was that he would actually be a son. Praise God. And through his sonship, we attain redemption. So he would have to, praise God, take on a, a man flesh and become a man because then he would have to die for us. So this dimension was so important that he would be the son of man. As he said when he was going to the cross, the son of man goeth as it is written of him. I Meaning it was written of him to be crucified. But woe unto the one who betrayeth the son of man. It was better. See, Jesus owned those dimensions of who he was. He owned his manhood. He owned his sonship. He owned his deity. He owned all of that. This is why at times you'll see that if you listen to Christ when he talked to the Pharisees, it's times when he would declare himself as the son of man, the son of God, and then other times he'd declare himself as God Almighty. 
when he told them that he, uh, before Abraham was, I am. Now you're talking dear to now. Praise God. Now you're talking dear to And they pick up stones. At one time, the stone them said, you being a man, make of yourself God. They understood the language. Praise God. <laughs> they understood the language. And they was on cue. He was declaring himself as God. And he even told them, uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killeth the prophets, talking now, this deity is speaking out, thou that killeth the prophets and stoneth them, that I, uh oh, sound like Yahweh now, that I send unto you. How many times, speaking like Yahweh now, how many times would I have gathered you, but you would not? Now in your house, because the temple is about to be destroyed, your house lay unto you desolate. Because the temple is about to come down. Which was considered in those days the house of God. Now remember when Jesus seen them in, in there selling and buying and making merchandise out of, out of God's people and, 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 and had turned the temple as Jesus referred to, had turned his father's house into a den of thieves. So when he talk about the house there, he's talking about the temple. Your house is laid unto you desolate. Then he prophesied and told him in another place, there will be not one stone upon another that will not be cast down. Talking about their house being destroyed, being laid desolate. Then another place he talked about when you see the abomination that brings destruction or desolation stand in the holy place. Again, prophesying about the destruction of the temple because the abomination would be when a Gentile enters into that temple, which the Gentile actually would have been, uh, did become uh, Titus, General Titus. When Rome came to destroy the temple, the general Titus of Rome came and stood in the holy place. Stood in the temple, as Jesus said he would. When you see this, Jesus said, let those that's out in the field don't come back, praise God. Because when he come, he come to lay the temple to the ground. And he also come to, to besiege the whole city. Come to think, see, he's, he's bringing desolation. He's not going to only destroy the temple. He's going to kill some people. And they say, pray that your flight, because you have to get out of town, pray that your flight be not in the winter. Pray that it be not on the Sabbath day, because that's a bad time for you guys, because you're in worship. You're in worship. Because you have to get out of town. Before he sees his whole temple, and after a while he's going to encamp around. Nobody's going to be able to get out. Pray that your flight be not. And they say, let him that readeth understandeth. Because everybody that read that didn't understand what he was talking about. Talking about the destruction of the temple. And he said, the abomination, the work of desolation is talking about a person that he's referring to as an abomination, which is Titus. Standing in the holy place where he don't belong. Because at that time, a Gentile was not to enter into the temple. But he did. And the reason one stone would be, not one stone upon another be cast, uh, would, would be there because it's going to cast it down because the temple was made out of stone, not out of brick. That's why he said that. So many things Jesus said that referred to him as who he was. Now, he was man. He was the son of man. He was the son of God. And he was God in the flesh. Praise God. That's why he told his apostles when they say, show, me, show us the father. He said, he that seeth me, seeth the father. Speaking as Yahweh now. He that seeth me, seeth the father. So why are you asking me to show you the father? That's not enough for you. He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Oh, praise God. You still missed it. Praise God. Because it's spiritually discerned. For the spirit of God searches the deep things of God. 
for their spiritually discerned. Everybody's not going to get it, and it's okay. But as long as you can embrace him as the son of God, your redeemer, your savior, your sacrifice for your sins, you're off to a good start. Amen. And all the other dimensions of Christ will be given to you by revelation. And what you don't see about Jesus is okay in terms of his deity, but you must see him as the son of God. You must. And you must see him as the son of man. You must. Praise God. This is where salvation comes. Everything else is just for revelation purposes. When you look at the other dimensions of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't beat people up. They don't understand that Jesus is the very God. I don't beat them up for that. Because that knowing that Jesus is God doesn't bring salvation. But knowing that Jesus is the son of God brings salvation. Amen. So those that can see him as the son of God. Amen. It's where salvation will come. And that's, that's beautiful day. Off to a good start. Amen. Jesus told the apostles, I have many things to say unto you. You cannot receive them now. There are people that once they come to the Lord, there's many things that can be said unto them, but they cannot receive it now. It's okay. They will receive it at some point. Praise God. And when you get to heaven and find out there's only one sitting on the throne, I guess you will be understanding everything by then. Praise God. Praise God. There won't be three sitting on the throne. Uh, there won't be three to make up one sitting on the throne. There'd be just one. Just one. And then in the book of Zechariah, the 14th chapter, say, in that day there shall be one Lord, and his name shall be one. Because God always brag on being one. He said, I stretch forth the heavens by myself. Yahweh says, by myself. Praise God. God emphasize on being one. So let's let's get get into the word for the day. We won't be long. Praise God. Yes. Let's start in. Uh, we're gonna start in Exodus. Yes, third chapter. Yes. Exodus third chapter, starting at verse two. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Now God introduced Himself to Moses by fire. This is God's introduction of himself. Praise God. And then later Moses wrote and said, God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God introduced himself to Moses by appearing as fire. Read that fifth verse. Yes. Fifth verse of the third chapter. Mm -hmm. And he said, draw not near either, but put off thou shoes. Now, now watch this. He sees the sight. He sees this, this fire, this bush that's on fire. Praise God. And God is burning, the, setting the bush on fire, but who he really want to set on fire is Moses. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So... He's seeing the manifestation of God. God is introducing himself to Moses by fire. And then he tell him, Moses to draw near. Come a little closer, praise God. Hallelujah. Come closer. Warm yourself in this fire, praise God. Come closer, praise God. Hallelujah. And then the next thing he tells him is what? Put off thy shoes from off thy There's thy something feet. you got to take off when you get close to the fire, praise God. Because it, it represents repentance here. Amen. There's some things about you that have to be shaven off. And there's some things about you you have to change, praise God. So, and, 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 and it can be in different areas, praise God. You may have to give up your traditions, praise God. You may have to give up, amen, your, your ideologies. Because now you're coming, praise God, to know the true one. The one that brings forth truth. And he's not going to let you stand before him in falsehood as you get close to the fire. He could have, I put it this way to help us today because we, in, to modernize it for you, he could have said, Moses, take off those Baptist shoes, praise God. That's your tradition. Take off those Methodist shoes, praise God. Amen. I want you to stand before me because I'm going to present truth to you because you're getting close to the fire. Amen. I can't let you come up here with your tradition. I can't let you come with your ideology. You're going to have to take that off, praise God. 
Hallelujah. Because you're standing before the true one. The one that brings forth truth, which is truly the spirit of truth speaking to you, Moses. Hallelujah. Something you got to take off. Those shoes could represent in our day and time denominations. Uh huh. Come on, take off those Catholic shoes, for example. <laughs> You've been wearing them shoes for long enough, but now you're getting, you're about to experience the fire of God, the spirit of God. Amen. Take it off, praise God. I know you've been holding on to it, and that's all you know or think you know about me, but take those shoes off, please. Those Methodist shoes, those Baptist shoes, those Catholic shoes, and whatever denomination you call yourself, take those shoes off, praise God, because the ground on which you stand, is holy, praise God. And holiness is not about a denomination. It's about a life, praise God. I just want you to be holy, praise God. I don't want you to be Catholic, Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist. I just want you to be holy, praise God. For the ground on which you stand is holy. Hallelujah. So God reveals himself to Moses by fire. Amen. We're going to call this message repentance and fire. Because in order to experience the fire of God, it calls for repentance. Something has to change about you. Hallelujah. You have to reposition yourself. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You have to turn your back on everything that's against God. Amen. And then you begin to experience who God really is, this fire. Hallelujah. Let's move on to um, the 19th chapter. Now, see, here we see where God introduced himself to Moses. Amen. But now in this chapter, God's going to introduce himself to the nation. The nation. So we're looking at 19, and we're going to start at... um, the 15th verse down to the 18th. And he said unto the people, be ready against the third day. Now watch this. We're going to meet with God. We've already got an appointment with him. I've already talked to him and, him and our, our father, Yahweh. We've already talked to him. And now, praise God, he wants to meet. Y'all guys going to get a chance to meet him. Moses already met him himself. Moses, praise God, have already stood at the burning bush. He's already been sent out. He brought them out of Egypt, praise God, and brought them, praise God, to this Mount Sinai. And now they need to, praise God, meet God for themselves. We know that God spoke to you, Moses, but the nation needs God to speak to them. And it's okay that your parents may were saved, but you need God to save you. Praise God. And what God said to your parents were beautiful children, but God need to say something to you. Praise God. You need an individual, praise God, encounter with him. You can't live off the encounter of your parents, your grandparents, and those before. You can't live off the encounter, amen, of what the pastor had with God. You got to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. It can't work with you saying, well, my mother saved. Oh, my pastor saved, my father saved, or oh, I know someone in my family that's saved, but you have to be saved from your sins through the blood of Jesus. So you need to have your own experience. And God's about to give this nation an experience, an encounter, a visitation, a manifestation. He's about to introduce himself. Praise God. And that's just like he introduced himself to Moses by fire. And see how he introduced himself to these people, the nation, Israel. Yes. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightning. And it's amazing that that God used the third day because he knows later he's going to come in the flesh. He's going to roll himself up in flesh. Amen. He's going to come as the son of man. Praise God. And he's going to hang on a tree. He's going to die for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Then be buried and be, be resurrected on after the third day. So God used a lot of things in the Old Testament as a preview of what will happen in the new. The three day means a lot to God. Because, praise God, when he tastes of death for every man, 
He's going to abide in death for 72 hours. And then he's going to come back again from the grave. Defeating death. So that every man may have a right to eternal life. He's going to do this. This is what the message of Christ is all about. Jesus, amen, tasting death for all of us. Then coming back again from the dead to declare us righteous. And now we have a right to eternal life because of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So God use this on the third day we're going to meet. Could meet it could meet on the first day. After first, it could meet on the second. But God said after the third day, praise God. There's something about this, praise God. Because God is pointing towards the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's giving them a preview. After this, God makes himself known. Praise God. After this. You know, it's after the resurrection that John has later on, amen, the apocalypse. He has the revelation of Christ. And when Jesus meets up with John, praise God, he said that his hair is white as wool. It's not looking like the Jesus that I met on the shores of Galilee. He looked like the eternal God here, praise God. Feet look like a br- a, a brass burning in the fire. Oh, you look a little different. Eyes like a flame of fire. Oh, my God, you don't look like. You look like I'm seeing the eternal God here, praise God. And the first time Jesus ever told the apostle was on the Isle of Patmos when he said, I am the first and the last. He never told him that, praise God, when they walked with him for three and a half years. But then all of a sudden he reveals who he is, praise God. I'm the first and the last. See, then he celebrates who he is on his deity side. And he comes back to his humanity and says, I'm he that was dead. But behold, I'm alive. See, God celebrates all the dimensions of Christ. But I'm alive forevermore. I'm celebrating my humanity too, praise God. Because I had to become a man to save man, praise God. Without my humanity, humanity couldn't be saved. Without me becoming the son of man, Jesus could say to us, nobody would have been saved. But I celebrate my humanity by saying I once was dead. But behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys. I can determine everyone's eternal destiny. I have the keys to death and hell. I determine everyone's destiny now. I am the judge of all the earth, praise God. Every man will have to stand before me. And I will decide, praise God, where they go. I will design. Because he has power over all flesh to give eternal life to whom he will. He has the keys, saints. He has the keys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He celebrates his many dimensions. Celebrates the fact that he is the the, uh, everlasting father. He is the eternal God. Then he also celebrates his humanity. By talking about how he was crucified, how he was put to death, but then raised again from the dead, never to die again. When he talks to John, praise God. And lets John know, he makes it known to John also in all that he's saying that he's the judge. He's the redeemer. He's the savior. But he's also the judge of the dead and the living. Praise God. Yes. So he's going to introduce himself to this to uh, Israel, the nation. Yes. Keep reading. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that they were that there were thunder and lightning and a thick cloud upon the mount. And you know, if you read the Book of Revelations, you, you heard thundering and, and all these things taking place in life. So you know, it's, it's, it's God's giving the revelation of Himself. But go ahead. And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that again was going in back the to camp, the, going back to John, John talked about his voice sounding like a trumpet at times, and also, you know, he, his voice is loud. Voice is sounding like a trumpet, introducing himself, introducing himself to the nation. Keep reading. 
that all the people that was in the camp trembled. They, they shaked. They trembled. And Moses trembled too. They trembled. In the 12th chapter of, of uh, Hebrews, it talks about how Moses trembled. Because it, go, it, it goes back over this whole story in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, but explains it in, in relationship to the New Testament believer in our covenant and what we have attained, praise God. So you might want to read the 12th chapter of Hebrews in, in light of this 19th chapter of Exodus, and you get probably a better understanding. Praise God. And it makes a comparison of covenants and how our covenant will exceed and have exceeded their covenant. Yes, keep reading. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. Mm -hmm. And the Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of the furnace. Now stop there. We're just going to stop there. When he ascended upon it, he set the mountain on fire. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he set the bush on fire to get Moses' attention, but now to get Israel's attention, he's going to set the mountain on fire. Praise God. But all these are representations of what would take place in the new Praise God. All these are representations. He sets the bush on fire to get Moses' attention. He sets the mountain on fire to get the nation's attention. He's revealing himself as fire to them. Hallelujah. Let's now go into uh, Kings. We won't be long today. We're going to go to Kings, uh, 1 Kings 18 and 24. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Now watch this, Elijah. This is Brother Elijah talking, Brother Prophet Elijah. He was, praise God, the one that often revealed that God was, amen, a, a fire. So now he says to Israel, and if you read this, whole chapter, praise God, you see where he asked them, how long will you be between two opinions? Either Baal be God or the Lord be God. And translation would be saying, either Baal be God or Yahweh be God. But how long will you be between two opinions? So here in this verse, he says, you guys that worship Baal, let's go ahead and have this meeting. We're going to set up sacrifices. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Praise God. And you'll see in the story how the Baal worshipers called on Baal from, from morning to evening. And there was no answer. <laughs> Praise God. They called. They called and called and called. And Elijah looked at them and said, well, maybe he might be on a far journey. He could be. He took, could took a vacation or something. He kept making fun of them. Oh, maybe he may be asleep and you guys need to wake him up. Because he knew that they, they, wasn't, they had no God. All they had was the vanity of their minds. And he knew it. But Israel had fell prey to this. And he was there to bring them to repentance. Elijah's job was to bring the nation to repentance. This was the, 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 the anointing he had upon him. He was able to bring revival to Israel, to bring Israel to repentance, to bring them from serving false gods to serving the true and living God. So then he's now challenging this false God that they've been convinced to follow because he's trying to bring them back to God. And so Elijah's words unto them is that let the God that answer by fire. Because see, our God is a consuming fire. We know how God communicates with his people. That's why he chose fire. Let the God that answers by fire. Let him be God. Because we know how God, he answered us like he answered in days of old. He answered Moses by fire. Praise God, by burning, setting that bush on fire. He answered the nations in time past, or the nation Israel in time past, by setting the 
a mountain on fire. So he's calling on that same God to show yourself again by fire. Hallelujah. We need to see the fire of God. Is what he was saying. Yes. Let's, 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 uh, let's move on to 37. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God. Now listen, the only way they're going to know is that you're going to have to answer them by fire. Because this is how we learned of you from our beginning of our history. You've always answered us by fire, praise God. When it's time to set the children free from the bondage of Egypt, you answered Moses by fire. When you brought us out of Egypt, praise God, and we was getting to know you, you introduced yourself by fire. Now we're calling on the same God. You're the same yesterday and today and forevermore. We need to see the fire of God. Hallelujah. You're that same God. And Elijah is challenging God as well as he's challenging the people to follow him. Praise God. Read that verse again, yes. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that th the, this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and thou, and that thou hast turned thou their heart back again. Yes. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood and the stones and the dust and the licked up the water. Because what Elijah did, he was challenging God. He soaked the sacrifice with water. Then he built a trench and put water all around him. Because he wanted to show them how powerful their God is. In other words, I'm going to put all of this in place that, you know, naturally, if nothing could have caught on fire with water there. So you know this is God. So you know this is God. So then God... When the fire of God came down, he licked up the water, praise God, <laughs> hallelujah, like it was nothing. And, it, and, it, and it's a type of us, praise God, when we are facing something, God can lick up your situation, praise God, like it's nothing. It was big to you. It, it overwhelmed you, but God's going to lick it up, praise God. It's going to show you that it's only been big in your eyes. It was always small in my eyes. It's done. It's over, though it never was. Hallelujah. And you've been managing it. Not knowing that I could get rid of it in, in a moment. Praise God. I just needed you to trust me for that. And heck I'm God. Yes. So he licks up the fire. Again, God has proven himself by fire. Now when we go to uh, the New Testament, we see John the Baptist comes on the scene. And the Bible says he comes with the spirit of Elijah. He got, he's, he's full of revival, just like Elijah was. And what's the first thing that come out of his mouth? He said, that he that's coming after me, whose shoes I'm not worthy to lose, he shall baptize you with fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. So now we've seen that God set the bush on fire. He set the mountain on fire. But John the Baptist turns around and tells us that he's going to set you on fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Because God didn't really want to be in the bush anyway. He didn't even want to be in the mountain. He wanted to be in his people, praise God. Hallelujah. He always wanted to be in his people. So now God ends the, amen, this, 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 this. Uh, he brings us into an hour where he ends the dispensation of grace. It's all about the fire of God. The fire of God. So then we see, and, and when we look at God's spirit, we're looking at fire. Every time someone preached the gospel, preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and bring souls into repentance, the next thing to do is to call fire down from heaven to consume them, Father. Let your children be consumed in the fire, praise God. That means everything about you is not right. God's about to burn it up, praise God. He's about to remove everything about you, your envy, your strife, your malice, praise God, your jealousy, praise God. Everything about you, those hidden sins nobody know about, God's about to burn it up in the fire, praise God. Now, when you read the book of Leviticus, God tells the priest about the burn offering. And remember now, you are a living sacrifice, according to the book of uh, Romans, the 12th chapter. You are that sacrifice, but you really, in that, as a sacrifice, you become a burn offering. The burn offering, you set it on fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. See, that's the kind of sacrifice you are. God will set you on fire. If you are a living sacrifice, then he must give you his spirit. He must set you on fire. Hallelujah. And my prayer that every believer, no matter what denomination they find themselves in, that God was baptized them with fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because that's what did, we in this last days, and God is doing that. God is baptizing his believers, those that call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Now, guess what? When you call upon his name, you know how he's going to answer you. The Bible says, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know how he's going to answer you. He's going to answer you by fire. His spirit's going to come down upon you. And his spirit is the fire of God. On the day of Pentecost, Luke picks up the pen and he writes about the experience of those in, in, in the upper room, the 120 that was in the upper room. And he said he's seeing tongues of fire, praise God. Because again, God was setting his kids on what? Fire. Hallelujah. That's where we're at, saints. This is what, amen, the message is all about. Once we bring you to that place of repentance, then the fire of God is to come down upon you. Hallelujah. We look at the uh, second chapter of Acts, we've seen that the fire came down. We look at the eighth chapter of Acts, we've seen that the fire came down upon the Samaritans. Praise God. We, 120 was the uh, second chapter, but then we go to the tenth chapter of Acts. A band of, 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 of soldiers, Italian soldiers, which are really Roman soldiers. The word for Italian is Roman, really. Praise God. God sets them on fire. And when Peter looked on, he said that he's looking at them. He's seen the same fire that fell on him. Praise God. Fell on them. Praise God. That same fire. That same fire. And then Paul meets a group of believers that need to be baptized with fire on the upper coast of Ephesus. And he's saying to them, have you received since you believe? God's about to set you on fire, praise God. Hallelujah, God's about to burn you just like he burned the Mount, Mount Sinai. He's about to set you on fire like he set the burning bush on fire, praise God. He's about to set you on fire. Hallelujah. That's what you let believers know. You repented of your sins. God's about to set you on fire, praise God. You turn from this world to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe in his death, his burial, his resurrection. You believe in all of that. He's about to set you on fire, praise God. He's about to set you on fire. But we thank the Lord for this message, repentance and fire. That's the name of it, repentance and fire. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is unto you, and unto your children, and unto those that are far off, and as many as the Lord our God shall call. God bless you.